The tragic story of Chris Heron. Well, let's just get started, man. Woo! I'm on my way to an island and I'm popping shit at the palace. Niggas be broke and be sobbing, but still talking shit like they violent. Niggas Chris Heron was born in Fall River, Massachusetts and went to Durfee High School and had an extremely great career there. In 1994, he was one of the best players in the country. As a senior in high school, he scored 2,000 points. He was the Gatorade and Boston Globe Player of the Year. He was an All-American, you name it, he was the man. He got recruited by Duke, Kentucky, but turned it down to stay home and instead went to Boston College. He was so good that he was in a two-page piece on the Rolling Stone magazine, I believe, alongside Allen Iverson and Ray Allen as the guys who were going to bring back the Big East Conference. In his first year in BC, he came to his dorm room with two girls doing a line of cocaine. At first, he refused, but then he got persuaded and the next thing you know, Chris Heron was doing cocaine. And that is where it went downhill. And downhill, it went. In his first game in BC, he broke his wrist and had to sit out for the rest of the season. And because he was injured, he had all the free time in the world and did a lot of cocaine because of it. And then he went to fail drug test after drug test after drug test. And three months into his college career, he was on the face of every Massachusetts newspaper being portrayed as a junkie and his career in Boston College was over. However, Fresno State took a chance on Heron and he had a great sophomore year averaging 17.5 points and five rebounds on 47% shooting. But when he wasn't on the hardwood floor, he was still doing cocaine as many of his friends from Fall River actually came to Fresno State because of his success. In his junior year, he was told by his school and the athletic director that he was going to be a first round draft pick in the NBA as long as he didn't do anything stupid. But as expected, he was doing lines of coke hours before his game, but no one knew and no one cared because he was being successful. Once again, he failed another drug test in Fresno State and was sent to Utah for rehab for around a month. So after coming back from rehab, he had a decent season averaging 11 points and 7 assists and entered the NBA draft. And because he was a senior, combined with his addiction problems, he was selected as the 33rd overall pick in the draft by the Denver Nuggets. Now when Denver, Nick Van Exel and Antonio McDice took Chris under their belt and watched his every move. They didn't allow him to go to clubs, they didn't allow him to drink, and especially they didn't allow him to do cocaine. He had an okay season, man, for a second rounder, three points and three assists in 13 minutes, and more importantly, he was the most sober he's ever been in years. But when the off season came, he was off of Nick Van Exel and Antonio McDice's radar, and when he came back to Fall River, he was introduced to Oxycontin, and immediately got hooked. And then he came back from the off season and was told by the Denver Nuggets management that he has been traded to the Boston Celtics. Now in any other situation, that would be great. A player playing for his hometown? That sounds amazing. LeBron James in Cleveland, Derrick Rose in Chicago, but not for Chris Heron. This was hell reincarnated. Now that Chris was in Boston, he had all the access to all the drugs he wanted wherever and whenever he wanted, and you're damn right, he abused that privilege. He even had a story where he left shoot around with 20 minutes left to wait for his oxy dealer outside of the arena and rushed back with 4 minutes left to get introduced into the starting lineup. Guys, I don't think you're getting it. We're talking about an NBA player here, man. Just imagine if your favorite player left shoot around to get some oxy outside the arena. That's crazy. Chris Heron was addicted. Period. He then had an injury and because he wasn't really playing that well, he was waived by the Boston Celtics and Heron decided to go overseas to Italy. But you'd think after having your college career ruined, after having your NBA career ruined, you'd learn, right? Wrong. In Italy, he got introduced to another drug, heroin. He moved around to play in different leagues from Italy to China to Istanbul and his family didn't know any of this was going on. Chris said that out of the $22,000 he made a month, he was probably spending $10,000 on heroin alone. One day he came home to Fall River from Istanbul and told his daughter he was just gonna go to Dunkin' Donuts to get some munchkins for her. Next thing you know in the parking lot of that Dunkin' Donuts and was once again on the newspaper. And then another drug came along crystal meth. 
In his 30 for 30, he told a story about a time where he went on a crystal meth run with his friend and got caught by the police with his family waiting for him at an airport. He forgot about them because he was so high. Now he did get out of jail, but he was basically homeless and then fell over in a random aisle behind a convenience store and was contemplating whether or not he should even return to his wife and his family and was literally just thinking of living with two random guys who woke him up in the street. And through all of this, his wife was providing and keeping the family afloat for their children while Chris was injecting heroin to his bloodstream behind their back. On June 4, 2008, he overdosed on heroin again, was rescued by an ambulance, revived, and was told that he was dead for 30 seconds. He went to rehab again, got out after 45 days of being sober to see his son being born, came out of the hospital, went to the liquor store, got high that night, and in the morning his wife had enough. He got kicked out by his wife and was told to never come back until he was fully recovered. He went back to rehab for one last time and finally got it together for good, you know, at least as far as I know. Now Chris Heron has recovered and is going around the country to tell his tragic story to high school students and to people in rehab. If it wasn't for him going around touring the country and coming to my school, I honestly wouldn't have learned about him. I wouldn't be making this video right now. So I want to thank you Chris for spreading your message and trying to be an influence to teenagers that may not know the dangers of these drugs. Now I know you won't reach every one of us, but I know for sure you have at least influenced a handful and that's all that matters. And hopefully with me telling his story, I have reached one of you guys who may be struggling through an addiction and have made you realize the dangers of substances like cocaine, like Oxycontin, like crystal meth. I will leave some links in the description for some sources of help if you want, and also try to watch Chris Heron's 30 for 30, which is where I got all of this information alongside his presentation at my school. But just summarizing everything up, a man who was a McDonald's All-American, recruited by the top programs in the country, was labeled to be just as good as guys like Allen Iverson and Ray Allen, who are gonna be in the Hall of Fame pretty soon. Went from all of that to not only just being a second round draft pick, which looking back is not even that bad, but to nearly losing everything from his money, his career, his life, and his family, all because of drugs. But with that being said, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I hope y'all learned something new and I am out, peace.